Well, it's great to be with you today. We're in Jonah chapter 4. I encourage you to turn there with me. I'm going to read a couple of verses in different places here in chapter 4. So make sure you're following along. And uh, we're going to start with the question that comes from God. It's asked twice to Jonah. The Bible says in verse 4, Then the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? He's speaking to Jonah. And then down in verse 9, he says, uh, Then God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And then down in verse 11, And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left, and much livestock? You know, um, Jonah was, we talked about this yesterday, he was, he was mad as a hornet. He was upset that God worked a revival and saved the people that he hated. And um, God challenges him on this. You know, how merciful and how long-suffering is God with us when we are all spun out emotionally, right? I mean, haven't you been there before where your emotions have just gotten the best of you and um, pretty soon you fi find yourself dominated by them? And even in all of that, the... The Holy Spirit is gentle and tender and, you know, for sure, God does not have to do this. Or like he said through the prophet Isaiah, come, let us reason together. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Like the very fact that God would be patient with us and reason with us is just, um, to me, it's an amazing thing. And he poses this question twice to Jonah. And not only that, he gives him like a, he gives him an illustration, a living illustration, you know, as Jonah is looking at the city of Nineveh, still hoping in his heart probably for the justice of God to fall. Um, and it's a very hot day in the desert. You're familiar with that if you live here in Las Vegas. And so God, by grace, prepares a plant that grows and, and uh, covers Jonah with uh, a shadow, kind of uh, protecting him and preserving him from the heat of the sun and the blast of wind. Uh, that comes like a blowtorch in desert areas. But then the next day, God prepares a worm, and the worm eats the plant. The plant dies, and Jonah's even more upset. And so there is uh, another uh, ex exhortation or question that God asked to Jonah. You know, are you upset? You know, yeah, I'm mad. I'm mad about the plant. So I'm mad that you were merciful to these people, and I'm mad that you took this plant away from me. Uh, you know, I think, I think as I consider what God said to Jonah, I think ab about how natural it is for us to find ourselves all spun out with emotions. You know, finding ourselves even in a place where our emotional disposition is not even in alignment with the will of God. It's not even in alignment with the way that God sees things. You know, we can... When we're off track emotionally, like Jonah, in Jonah's case, it was anger. So let's just, let's just stick to anger. We're mad at something. We're mad at somebody. We're mad at people. Somebody's offended us. This happens all the time, by the way. It happens uh, when you're out in the world. It happens even in the church. And you can, you can be all overwhelmed with emotion, the emotion of anger. Um, and even, this is how wicked I think our heart is, we can find ourselves justifying that response or reaction of anger to a place where we where we we believe we feel that it's actually the right thing to do. You know, Jonah might have been in that spot. Jonah might have looked at the Ninevites and thought, "Well, of course God hates them." You know, I mean, wouldn't it be the right thing for God to do to uh, execute justice and judgment on these people after all they've done to the nation of Israel? But the problem here is that Jonah was not seeing things the way that God saw them. You know, in, in his emotional disposition, he was, in fact, misaligned with God. Because God reveals to him, there's a very uh, personal revelation that God gives to Jonah so that Jonah can see the situation uh, from his perspective. And this is simply what he says, should I not pity let me, Jonah, let me tell you how I see this situation. You see through the lens of anger and everything that you're speaking right now and all of your actions are all fueled by this anger within your heart that you've justified. But let me tell you something. I see it completely different. 
I look at these people and my heart is moved to pity. They can't discern their right from their left. And not only that, I have pity, not just on them, but all of the living creatures that I've made. Jonah, my perspective of this is completely different than yours. You know, Jonah had lost sight. He knew who God was, but he had lost sight of how God saw this situation. And not only that, he had lost sight of who he was. He was a servant of the Lord. You know, his responsibility was not just to chart his own course of anger and um, do whatever he wanted to do, how he wanted to do it. His responsibility as a servant of God was to reflect the heart of God to these people, to be in line with what it was that God desired to do, what it was that God saw and what it was that God desired to do. He, he missed that completely. And I just want to um, encourage us today, whatever you might be going through today, by the way, with respect to anger, the Bible says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. And um, then it goes on to say in Ephesians chapter 4, forgive one another just as God in Christ has forgiven you. Like there's no place for unbridled anger in our lives that begin that begins to produce a judgmentalism or a desire to attack people where we lose sight of the mercy and the grace that God desires to give. I just want to encourage us today to really press into those hard areas of our lives that we might be struggling emotionally with whatever emotion that is or whatever reaction we think is right. Let's ask God today to show us how He sees the situation Let's wait on him for that. Let's search the word and think about how it is that God sees things. And then let's, as servants of God, let's align ourselves with the will of God and be instruments that God can use to bring about his divine purposes. There's going to be a cost in this, like uh, without a doubt. You know, you're going to be confronted. Maybe there's unforgiveness, you know, that you have in your heart towards somebody or bitterness, and God's going to call you to lay that down. Maybe there's this desire for justice. You know, you've been wronged, and God's going to call you to trust Him. You know, trust Him with the situation and that that He sees things. Uh, Whatever it might be, let's choose to align ourselves with God and His will. And you know what? When we do that, not only will there there be a, a great peace within our own lives, but there will be a manifestation of His Spirit through us as well, which I think is what we all desire. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the life of Jonah, God, in this amazing story, and the honesty, the transparency of what was happening in the heart of this prophet. And Father, we can look at his life and and um, be in shock or dismay that a man of God would behave like that. But God, we're tempted to do the same thing all of the time. And so we pray for your grace, God. We pray that you would help us to follow you, to not only be thankful for what it is that you do in our lives, but God, to be willing to extend it to others, even the undeserving. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good day.